Polony Undiverted by Sidney Van Sayak. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Matt Perard. Polony Undiverted by Sidney Van Sayak. With a whole world at her doorstep, what she wanted was completely out of reach. Polony's dream formed around a glare of light, a tang of men's lotion. Then she was awake to Brindle poking her. I'm hungry. She struggled to burrow back into sleep. I'm starving, kid. I can't sleep. She blared at the time spot. It was 3 a.m. Go away. Ah, uh, give me an omelet. Brindle a lot lately. His features were coarsening from it. His body was plumpening. She argued and protested and whined, and he hit her. But it didn't make her feel good any more when he hit her. Kitchen Central was in op for the night. She punched storage. Dried ingredients materialized on the cook grid, a flat metal sheet set into the countertop. Later, as she took the omelet up, she heard Brindle setting the opera tapes. She scowled. But when opera shattered their live, she dropped the skillet and cried, Oh, do we have to listen to that trash? Her voice was more weary than shrill. The opera routine was getting old. What you callin' trash? He twitched his plump shoulders. It makes me sick. He spat profanity. It wasn't a good fight. He knew something was wrong, and he hit her too hard. She slugged back, hurt her hand, cursed, ran and locked herself into the sleep. She was asleep when he came pounding. She woke and pointed the lock open. She glared. He said nothing. He ordered his smaller collections, his miniature horses, his ballpoint pens, and his old-time cereal box missiles onto his store shelf before mounting his sleep shelf and pointing out the light. She could hear him not sleeping. Finally, he muttered, Too damn much cheese, but it was okay. She said nothing. She didn't almost cry, as she might have a month before. Brundle had appeared on their grid a year before, a dark, pugnacious young man, jittering and nervous. Claire Webster around? Mother isn't here. Her mother collected men. She met them at drinking clubs or collector meets. She gave them her grid card and took theirs, making them promise to come see her. If a man came, she tacked his card on her bulletin board. If he came twice or three times, she marked this card with colored pencil. Brendle twitched his shoulders. I got the evening. Want to have dinner, kid? She was seventeen and tired of collecting china roosters and peach canned labels. She was tired of seeing the same stupid people every day. Somewhere there was someone handsome and perfect and she had to find him and become perfect, too. She couldn't waste all her life being stupid like her mother. It took her two hours to see that Brindle was the perfect person. He was handsome, aggressive, easy to be with. He quarreled all the time, and he even had a full-time job. She married him. She dropped her little girl collections and diversions. She was no longer a formless adolescent. She was very solid, very adult but the solidness had gone. She had found that Brendel's aggressiveness masked fear, his quarrelsomeness masked insecurity. Worse, he had no imagination. He plotted. It had begun two weeks before. Brendel had come home from work, tight and tense. He tried eating. He tried opera and quarreling. He tried exercises. Finally, he said, I'm going to go see Lasker Smith want to come who the hell's latsker smith already she was sick of the opera routine and a little sick of brindle drives a car from boston fella at the plant told me he's in center city minutes later they gritted out of the suburban maze they materialized on a corner grid in center city there was no one on the dusty street there was no car near the gaunt brick building where Lasker Smith was staying. They plopped on the doorstep. Brindle fidgeted and talked. Lasker Smith was the son of a rich industrialist. 
his father wouldn't support him unless he worked and latsker wouldn't work so he had to live on government non-employment allowance his pre-grid automobile and airplane were his only diversions since he couldn't leave boston by automobile boston being walled up like any city by the streetless suburbs he saved his allowance until he could commercial grid his car to another city there he raced and squealed and spun through the deserted streets of center city until he had saved enough to commercial grid the car elsewhere a throbbing split the air a red splinter of car hurtled around the corner and squealed to the curb a tall lank man unfolded ignoring them brindle sprang to overwhelm him he pulled him to the steps to make introductions but latsker smith peered absently at polony and she was embarrassed that brindle acted like an eager child confronting some heroic figure from a dream latsker's pop got money brindle launched into his story again when the story fizzled she said why couldn't you get a job smith held his head tilted don't want a job if you had a job you wouldn't have to stay one place so long no use being any place if i have to leave my car she pursed her lips inside the car she could see seats straps a wheel it was incomprehensible that he strapped himself in and hurtled through the streets it's a stupid thing to do she said you'll get killed no he said if you hit something you will i've heard those atrocity stories there were more people killed in automobiles from nothing to hit he said she flung out her arms buildings poles his lack of response offended her no need to hit them i've seen the films she had seen the crumpled metal the severed limbs the spreading blood driver error no drivers left too expensive on government allowance no one's stupid enough left you mean but it was stupid to glare when he wouldn't frown okay what's it feel like she demanded he lifted his shoulders and dropped them it must feel some way she peered down into the machine trying to imagine herself hurtling in it you fly an airplane too she accused he nodded i bet it feels just like gritting and it takes longer gritting he snorted mildly there's no sensation at all to gritting then how does it feel to fly she prodded brendel moved restlessly bored let's get going we just got here stupid she protested he was already pulling her to the corner grid i'm getting hungry she tried to jerk her arm free but couldn't how long will you be here she called back swatting brindle's arm he lifted his shoulders and dropped them if i come but brindle had given their number they were outside their own door and she hadn't felt a thing today she resented not feeling a thing these weirdos they talk too much i'm hungry she resented punching his food and didn't even want to quarrel she drowsed back into sleep remembering everything was empty she ate she slept she quarreled she gritted around seeing friends what else was there she couldn't get a job there weren't that many jobs and with the government allowance for not working who needed a job who needed anything a time of plenty her school machine had called it you just gritted around collecting and arguing to make it interesting there were so many people moving so fast that you had to quarrel and push or you'd get stepped on it was all stupid brindle didn't help a bit he was stupid too she tried to imagine latsker smith echoing through the empty streets in his scarlet splinter of car latsker smith couldn't be stupid she slept three hours before the grid bell rang elka her cousin stood on the grid loose-haired big-toothed she swung a hat-box i didn't get you up no polony said hopelessly i'm gritting to n y c padding and it's not even seven paul i'm contritus but you weren't sleeping and i don't need hats you haven't seen the darling i got in paris i gritted over with celia kyle 
and honestly there was a shop that she convinced elka that she was not going hatting elka took her toll in coffee and gritted after her paris hat polony barely admired it and elka left before she could dial brindle's breakfast her mother was on the grid fluffy fleecy thrusting a wad of bills at her just on my way to mexico toodle punch me some coffee breathless moments later she was gone what took so long brindle demanded when she woke him mamma stopped she hated him like this his face creased and puffy from sleep she had never thought he would get fat he gulped his breakfast and left sometimes she hated him for just being the grid bell rang it was a salesman he insinuated she didn't have the money to buy his product she said his merchandise stank he left grinning but she didn't feel better the bell rang a young man muttered miss grid and disappeared she had gotten to the dress when she heard the door open she eyed the hall reflector and saw farron her mother's brother slip into the cook she dressed hastily farron would order breakfast and keep the silver to keep in from his own grid for the deposit he was plumped up to the counter a woolly-haired man attacking a stack of egg cakes let me have them he purred taking spoon and knife from a pocket the government allowance is hardly sufficient for a man of my tastes shielded by your father's fortune as you are you could get a job she punched coffee she wished he would go away he was always watching smiling spinning together soft words and add to the work shortage he wagged his woolly head then don't complain there should be a syrup pitcher too he produced it purring the grid bell rang two pig-faced men in black gridco uniforms blocked the doorway you got baron carmichael's inside lady no you always lied to gridco collectors we traced him here from dallas well he isn't here now how can we heard him talking he isn't here gridco could not remove a grid even though the subscriber refused to pay his quarterly bill the grid was held by law to be essential to human existence in the twisting walled alleys of suburbia gridco could only send collectors to follow until their quarry fell or was pushed into their hands and a man who had once fallen into gridco's hands paid eagerly forever after we can pull another trace do that she slammed the door she had time for a quick swallow of coffee before the bell rang he didn't go no farther she sighed well he won't come out i can't make him he'll come some time they leaned back against nothing waiting you're blocking my grid dutifully they stepped into the narrow corridor she slammed the door they are going to stand there until you go out Farron drained his coffee cup i'll settle here then if you he tutted thank you for the lunch invitation i she bit her tongue she would not get mad he wagged his head i'll peruse brindle's books fine collection for a young man books gritting her teeth she hurtled back to the dress the collectors rang every five minutes after that they kept ringing until she went and told them farron would not come out it wasn't the way she had imagined it would be when she was married what with punching brindle's meals sending out his clothes going collecting with him and quarrelling she hardly had a minute and the same stupid people elka farron his mother and father were always there the bell rang her father scowled seeing farron on brindle's best sit-shelf where he said grimly mexico she said pottery he said going the bell rang a heavy-jawed youth said miss webster gave me my mother has gone to mexico she slammed the door minutes later sella kyle gritted in crisp prim blonde i haven't seen you in such a time paul coffee 
she entertained sella and wished she would go and knew farron knew she wanted sella to go and found it amusing every five minutes the collectors rang she had just talked sella out the door when lucia collins gritted in lucia had never been poloni's close friend in school but now lucia was always near pushing prodding at poloni smiling too brightly at brindle you two are coming to lunch with me i've already asked farron to lunch silly he can punch his own oh no poloni said i take the silver farron smiled comfortably lucia flipped her hand at him atrocious man now poloni it ended with lucia inviting herself to come back to lunch she had hardly vacated the grid when elka appeared she unwrapped her purchases smirking at farron you'd be surprised the number of hats a girl needs she stayed half an hour another young man came for her mother two salesmen a travelling circular and a friend came then brindle was on the grid who these lugs for uncle farron she said shortly he lifted a lip at them then bounced inside forget your bill fairy hey kid punch drinks i refuse to honor it farron said brindle was already fishing in his pocket drinks kid she went to punch she hated his trying to give money to everyone who came along no no it is a matter of principle farron insisted but the money changed hands and there were certain other obligations how much you need brindle fished into his pocket again grinning the bell rang it was lucia all these ravenous people waiting on me she had changed into a fire-red day suit dobble you should have fed the beasts she snapped her fingers up beasts i'll help you punch dob glowering poloni moved toward the cook brindle followed chattering and arguing with lucia poloni was beginning to think again of a swiftly accelerating car of her body encased beside that of lasker smith and hurtled through dusty streets brindle said how many for opera she whirled and glared poloni's a bug on opera tell them how you like opera kid she glared the last time lucia and farron had been here he had done this and the time before didn't he have any imagination tell them kid fool didn't he know they were laughing at him she wanted to tear loose from her whole life it was trivial it was every day it was gossip and collections and stupid people she had to tear loose or she would go on and on all her life being nothing but herself she was too good for that she was too good for brindle he had tricked her and turned her into a fattening fool it was stupid to stay with him ah come on kid she drew herself up very straight and imagined she must look imposing i'll ask you all to leave she said calmly gone were the smiles i'm closing my grid to public access i'll ask you to leave immediately the words came out stiffly and precisely she imagined she must already be more than just herself what the hell brindle you may come back when i am gone i shall not return she smiled remotely i'm tired of punching your food and going collecting and quarrelling and being hit around i never hit you hard he said indignantly lucia stared at him dobble well she made me do it what am i supposed to do dobble you're perfectly justified but lucia's eyes remained on brindle bright and greedy poloni glared she would not stay and fight lucia for brindle she flung the door open the two collectors snapped alert i want to be alone she intoned brindle eyed her balefully but he had already noticed lucia's interest where are we going to go we can go to my lib lucia said i think dobble deserves her little whim brindle could not believe she was not going to fight you kid you're acting like a kid farron took brindle's arm 
don't stoop in conventional pettiness brindle brindle flushed i'm coming back you're not rooking me out of my collections he turned abruptly and stepped on the grid giving a three-passenger order he disappeared lucia followed farron stepped on tossed bills to the collectors and disappeared poloni closed the door she leaned against it breathing the silence then she hurried through the live setting it in order she straightened the books farron had been examining and found two missing even as lucia was punching dinner and saying all the things designed to make brindle want poloni back only briefly as a point of pride poloni was whisking into a brisk trouser suit and wondering how much had piled up in the account where she kept her parents gifts even as brindle was feeling lucia's face with his eyes letting her excitement speak to his own poloni was at the bank having her balance marked into her deposit clip even as farron was smiling and wondering how much the two books would bring poloni was rapping at the door of the apartment house in centre city and being told that yes mr smith still lived there presently latsker smith roared around the corner and braked his car he unfolded from the cockpit he nodded have you got money to go to boston yet she held herself very straight he shook his head i have money she said the pale eyes clung to her my parents give me an allowance and i could get jobs wherever we were i just want to ride with you i wouldn't even talk unless you wanted me to she had to be with him she had to sit and stand beside him as relaxed and withdrawn as he was she had to freeze people with her words and with her unrespondingness she had to make an end of stupidness he took a deposit clip from a pocket he pointed to a figure match that she withdrew her own clip and showed him a figure that exceeded his how much allowance she told him he nodded to the car wait there take me five minutes to pack dreadingly joyously she folded into the car she watched as he lanked up the steps she settled back holding her shoulders rigid and her head straight she would sit and stand by him she would chill people with her reserve she would be very solid and very adult but minutes later she looked at her wrist and saw that he had been more than five minutes she wished he wouldn't take so long when he came down the steps two at a time she tried not to remember that she hated people who came down steps two at a time she didn't like the way his hair flopped against his forehead either and she almost got out of the car when she saw his trouser suit was much too short it made him look off balance he got into the car don't touch this he pointed to the starter button he scowled or this or this or this he pointed to the pedals to the gear shift lever he reached out and heaved his suitcase into her lap he said brusquely don't let it bump the door panel a corner dug into her stomach and then he turned his head and ignored her completely and she forgot the steps the hair and the trouser suit and knew she would not get out of the car so long as he was in it end of poloni undiverted by sydney van sayon